All right, everybody. Well, hey, we are uh, back rock and rolling here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> uh, glad to have you guys here on Note Night in America. As always, I'm Scott Carson. I'm always honored to be here with you guys that you take time out of your busy schedule to join me. And uh, I will tell you this, uh, tonight's webinar is all about kind of leadership. It's Well, not just kind of leadership. It is leadership and how to effectively lead on some things. Because I see a lot of people doing some, some crazy things out there, and I just have to kind of shake my head. I'm just like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. But for, if you're joining us for the first time here on Note Night in America, welcome. We're glad to have you. Uh, tonight's all about leading your tribe. Uh, but before we dive into that, all as always, want to thank you for being here. Our goal over the next five years is to help educate and create 10,000 note investors. That's one of the big things that drives us for what we do to help educate, help create, help get people on the right track to success, whether it's A, you're trying to make more money or to leave your job or to retire or build a retirement or education, whatever it is, everybody's got a different goal and we're help, we believe that notes is one of the best ways to help you grow that and do that. So we're honored that you were taking time on your Monday night um, I literally think it was just a couple of nights ago that I was doing <laughs> the previous Note Night in America. But for those of you that join us for the first time, I always wonder who is on Note Night in America. You've got real estate investors, note investors, people looking to get notes, people looking to fund deals. Uh, we are recording the green button. The button is on. Did I hit record? Yep, we're recording live. Uh, you can catch them out at weclosenotes.tv. Or if you can't make it all and you're traveling, you don't want to download it on your phone, you can always listen to the replays of Note Night in America on iTunes podcasts. And so we're excited that uh, our team has got this up and rock and rolling. Um, just look for Note Night in America. It's available on iTunes podcast, Stitcher, um, all the popular ones. Uh, and I see people, I think we just went over the thousand download mark on there, which is awesome. So thanks for listening. Make sure to leave a review. Make sure to leave a, a comment, a post that helps others find the show as well. So thank you for that. As always, guys, if you're brand new to it, you're looking for some note training, looking for some stuff, you can always text the word notes to 72,000. It'll send you a PowerPoint slide, send you some videos, send you some replays of the Note Night in America to help you really get things rocking and rolling in your note business. So text notes to 72,000, you'll be rocking and rolling. But um, another thing we do have going on, Note Camp from over a month ago, each episode has been uploaded. We're trickling those. I think we're up to episode number 20 is on iTunes podcast as well. Uh, so if you missed Note Camp 5.0, we took each speaker session and made it a podcast. Made its own unique podcast for you to be able to download, listen, and catch on all the replays as well. And as always, we've got the, our big <laughs> bread butter podcast, the Note Closer Show podcast, over 97,000 downloads just a few minutes ago. So thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. But uh, we do have some upcoming events. I want to share with those because we got some that are pending uh, tomorrow night. Well, we're to May already. Go, it's halfway over. I'll be in uh, Raleigh, Durham, speaking at the Tria Real Estate Club there in Raleigh, Durham. Looking forward to that. I think it kicks off at six thirty. I think I go on at seven seven thirty. We're gonna have some fun tomorrow night. So if you're gonna be in Charlotte, come on down. Or sorry, if you're gonna be in Raleigh, Durham, come on down and see me in the Golden Triangle area at the Tria meeting. I think it's at the, uh, the Hilton Garden Inn or the Sheraton. There, you can check out the website for more information. And then this. Uh, Thursday through Saturday is the Laughlin Magnify Your Wealth Summit, um, or this Thursday through, that's not the 17th, the 18th through the 20th, it's the Laughlin Magnify Your Wealth Summit, 17th, 18th, 19th, oh no, it is right, I have the right numbers on there, sorry, uh, I may be appearing on Friday after all, um, not there for the whole day, but there's going to be quite a few of our note closure groups from our WCN crews, from our mastermind people joining there in San Diego, so if you're there, going to be at the Dana hanging out. You're going to learn some great stuff from Aaron and his team, and we might be swinging by there Friday uh, for a few hours. But anyway, uh, then we do have our next Fast Track training the 15th to the 17th. Um, National Social Media Day is June 30th. Golly, that is flying up on us. we got a month and a half till then. Uh, we have our first boardroom in Las Vegas. Steph will be getting out notices to those people that are signed up for that. We have our next virtual note buying workshop July 9th, 20th to the 22nd. And then our note mastermind group is taking place in Dallas, Texas. That's going to butt up right next to the Quest Expo. And also, if you use the code WCN, you get a 30% discount off the Quest Expo, either either ticket class, the regular general mission, or the VIP aspect of things. Okay, question here. Thank you, Gail. I'll fix that when we get back. 
All right, moving on. Uh, okay. Uh, got a, a hire today. I want to welcome Shannon Steedle to our team. Um, I posted something on Facebook and the WCN crew. Shannon's going to be helping out and assisting with the No Closer Show podcast uh, and some other marketing. Just hired her today. She starts tomorrow. Uh, really excited to have her take on some of the duties on that. So if you see Shannon posting, that's who's posting. Just want to give you guys a heads up on that. She'll be uh, doing a great job for us. We're excited to have her aboard and uh, expect some big things from her over the next few months. So uh, any questions on any of the events before we get rocking and rolling here? Knocking things down, okay? Questions, comments, anybody? So let's dive into leading your tribe, everybody. All right, because let's talk about it. Leading your tribe. Many of you, how many of you think you're not a leader of any sort? I will tell you that every one of you is a leader of some sort of some sort of tribe, okay? Um, and yes, this is a little bit with the book by Seth Godin. It's one of my favorite books. People constantly ask me all the time, what's your favorite book? And I say, tribes, okay, or Outward the Devil. This one by Seth Godin is one of the best books that you can ever read about your business, about your life and what you are offering people out there. Whether you believe it or not, we need you to lead us, as he likes to say. And I would agree to that. Um, everybody has a tribe. Everybody has some opportunities. So let's talk about first what is a tribe? If you look at the definition in a dictionary, it's a noun, okay? It's a social division in a traditional society consisting of families or communities linked by social, economic, religious, or blood ties with a common culture and dialect, typically having a recognized leader, okay? All right? Think of that. Think about all of those things. Social, economic, religious, blood ties, culture, and dialect, okay? Typically, it says typically, doesn't mean necessarily all the time. Typically, there's having a recognized leader. And so I like to ask the question, what's your tribes? Uh, oh, hang on a second. Damn it all. I would goof up my, well, my favorite slide. All right. Oh, damn it all, son. I just screwed something up here. All right, fly in. There we go. Let's try this now. All right, who are your tribes? Because we all have tribes that we work with. Now, it's not talking about an Indian tribe here, okay? Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. We all have tribes. We all make up a different variety of tribes. I mean, we all are putting tribes early on, whether it's your grade school photo. No, that's not a photo of my fifth grade class or sixth grade class or kindergarten class. But we all get put into tribes early on. We start building those tribal features, that culture. The economic, the social, you have the popular kids, not so popular kids, the jocks, whatever, the clicks, all right, that we talk, fall into. You know, and then you have like where you go off to college, sports, sporting events is often a tribe. Yes, that's me, number 53, bald headed there. That's a picture of my uh, college football team, college playoff team we played on. Okay. You look at uh, in college, oftentimes fraternities, sororities are a tribe of their own. Okay. Um, you look at, Workplace, your office are often tribes. Mostly those are mostly forced tribes a little bit because you're hired for a job and then you're expected to work together, right? Um, some of you probably say office space, my favorite spot, Dunder Mifflin, right? Toga, toga, exactly, there you go. You also look at things of like the military is a tribe, okay? A f you know, a few good men, all right? Uh, can you do me a favor, guys? Please leave your questions to the end. Ralph, I, I guess you're brand new, buddy. Uh, just drop me an email at Scotty. We close notes. Okay, guys, please keep your questions directly on top. Um, otherwise, save them to later. Okay. We also ask, you know, with church tribes, we also have tribes we're a part of, like our mastermind groups, a tribe of people that get together on a regular basis. Okay. We all belong to a variety of tribes and we all have different leadership abilities or following abilities in our tribe. So the question is, how did we get to where we're at today? Because it's changed over time to think about. It. And honestly, it started off, if you think about the first major change was really had to deal with Henry Ford. Henry Ford brought people in from the outside into his factory where people were going from making 50 cents a day to $5 a day because his 
plants are working so well. So he did a really good job of transitioning people to kind of this working tribe. Okay. Um, that kind of evolved our time to the point where we developed TV, where we had man, men, you know, you had advertising, you know, uh, the TV and radio ads, uh, and, and a lot of companies would just buy ads and then try to slam it down your throat, literally try to push it down your throat on a regular basis. Like buy, buy, buy. And if you still see this today, you'll see this so much today. People trying to, Oh, Hey, come to McDonald's and he's the clown, you know, or they, Say, you know, buy a Burger King or you see all these tribes They'll lose weight, gain weight. Uh, you know, let, uh, men get grow. You're the thing that lady loves you the most. OK, they literally that's a bad analogy with push it down your throat there. Sorry about that. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at is those were that was a transition when we had all different type of advertising. It was a different way to try to find tribes. Join this. Join that. Are you sick with this? If you look back at the old ads, you see how it targets the people whether they use babies or cigarettes or other things like or doctors to try to get people to sell their product. It was all about those that could buy more ads or could push more ads was all the leading to it. Now that obviously has transitioned over the few, last years as we've gotten more technological based and gotten smarter to get where we're at today. All right. And we've always had different types of social networks, but if you look at you know, kind of what Zuckerberg with Facebook, it's helped really make us a social world good or bad. It, there's sides of both sides of the story. Okay. But it's never been easier to connect with the people that you want to surround yourself with. Okay. From the mainstream of life, like, you know, Cowboys fans want to get together. Mainstream is so you're popular about to the fringes of whether you're a goth lover or let's go. We're cat ladies. Let's go, let's go hang out with cat people. You know, there's a whole variety of different ways to get to where you want it today to connect because ultimately we all just want to connect, everybody. Everybody just wants to connect with somebody to walk down that same path. Nobody wants to go it alone. Very few people want to pull the Ralph Waldo Emerson saying it's be easier to leave the path and hack out a trail through the forest, okay? Lead a path of your own. You Nobody wants to do that. We all just want together and we want to burn some shit down, okay? We just want together and do what we do. Whether it's, oh, we want to get together and bitch about Hillary, or we want to get together and bitch about Trump, or we want to get together and bitch about whatever. A lot of times it comes down to that. And the social network, especially today, I see tribes are just so unpositive and negative and this, ugh. And that's why it's important because it's important to be a leader more so today with a positive spin on things and a focus of things because there's such a lack of leadership out there all across the board, Okay. So I want you to think of where you, you're at today and think of if you really pushed what you're focused on, you can t totally turn your tribe into a movement, everybody. And if I think back to where I started back nine years, 10 years ago, I was one guy basically who had like six clients, six people I connected with. And I went out and spoke somewhere and I met a few more people, okay? And I spoke to a couple other groups and I ended up growing, all right? Had a growing movement that as I moved across the country and talked to people, my network got bigger, it got larger, and it kind of turned into a movement. Not exactly like a movement like the Susan G. Komen Foundation or, or anything like that. What I'm trying to get at is I started off just doing what I needed to do, closing deals and talking about it. And that's what I want you all to focus on. If you are closing deals or you're looking to close deals, you close any type of deals, share what you've got going on. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, it's been five years since I closed a deal. That's Then you're kind of beyond the times. Oh, I've only closed 30 deals and I haven't closed a deal in the last year. Well, then you probably aren't shouldn't be leading, especially if there's other people out there doing a lot more deals. Okay. And one of the biggest things I have to tell you guys, if you to be an effective leader out there, especially on the leadership trains I've taken, the books that I've read and the people... It can't be about you. You've got to take ego out of it. You've got to little take ego. Uh, you've got to be movement or group mindset. You can't have a me focus, okay? You can't have, oh, it's all about me. No, it's not all about you. If it's all about you, then it's you're a, a, an army of one, okay? And I'm not trying to say anything about the army slogan. You get what I'm saying if you're out there running, nobody's following you. You're not a, leading a tribe. You're an idiot. Okay. Leaders see the need and act. Okay. 
They see something that needs to be done. They just go do it. They get it done. And you can be vocal about it or you can be non-vocal about it. Okay. They see a need and they act. Okay. Now, the big thing is a lot of people are like, well, I think I need permission to go do something. No, you don't need a permission to lead. Honestly, you don't need any type of permission to lead. You just go do it. Go do it because that's what leaders really do. They see a need. They go do it. And sometimes asking permission or asking for forgiveness is better than asking for permission. You've heard that saying. Okay. Oops, sorry, my phone's acting kind of funky here. So what am I trying to get at? Okay. You also don't need charisma to lead. You don't have to be outgoing individual. Okay. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm not a leader. I'm an introvert. I don't want to get up and do anything. Well, that's okay. Fine. That's what you want to feel. Don't do that then. Okay. You don't need charisma to lead, but if you lead, leading does build and does give you charisma. And honestly, the best leaders in the world are the ones that just go get stuff done. And those are the people that res- they get they build respect that way. Okay. If you talk about, oh, you could have some of the best charismatic people that can be some of the worst leaders, of course. Okay. You think about like, uh, I'll give you an example. Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. At his point, he was very charismatic. Didn't mean he was a great leader. I mean, he led his tribe. Didn't mean he was a great leader when it came to everything being done. Okay. What often leaders are, though, are their be- the best storytellers. They're the ones that help them tell the story about their cause, their movement, what they're focused on. I'll give you an example, Tom Shoes. Okay. It's a great story. Hey, anytime you buy a pair of shoes, we'll donate a pair of shoes. That's a great story. Okay. Uh, um, the guy that started Zappos, he's not a shoe, just shoe store. He's the best shoe distributor. It's where people would go to, to find shoes, to connect with shoes. Okay. There's a lot of great, great leaders out there to make things happen. You have a, a guy out in San Francisco by the name of Nathan Winograd, who just going out and started rescuing animals from the shelters, from the kill shelters, going out and rescuing them and helping them get delivered and rescued throughout the country. Now it's one of the biggest movements when it comes out there. Okay. He has shells it. He tells the stories about the animals. And so the question I ask you guys, what's your story? Telling your story. I was a teacher or I was a fitness instructor. Or I was a mortgage broker or a realtor and I failed, or you've heard that story. And I'm talking the rags or riches stories, but you all have a story and we all have a journey. Okay. We all have different deals that we deal with on a regular basis. You by leading is by sharing those stories, sharing those case studies in the note industry that gives more fodder, more ammunition to people to be able to identify what they're doing and be able to feel a bit more comfortable. Okay. Now I have a picture of Steve Jobs and Bill Gates up here. And these guys are laughing here on stage, but they necessarily weren't good friends. Okay. They did things differently. Think of how they connected people differently. One did through software. The other one did to Apple software, phones, things like that. Connecting with people is differently for them. Okay. And you can look at these guys probably weren't one of the most charismatic people growing up. (laughs) Okay. Maybe probably even a little awkward, would probably be easy to say. Okay. But they built a movement. They built the story. They built a environment. They built a culture and grew their business to unbelievable heights. Can we agree to that? So the thing I ask you guys is what is your thing or cause? And, I, and you're a note investor, you're a real estate investor. Hopefully you're here tonight for that. Okay. Notes is obviously one of the great big things that we're a big part of. Okay. Some of you are a real estate investor. Some of you are doing a variety of different things. Maybe notes is just not, it's just one notch in your belt. Okay. Maybe you guys are out there looking for higher returns because you've got to make up something. Maybe you've got to make more money to replace your retirement or replace a job or to help pay for things later on. Maybe some of you are leaving your job. That's your cause or your thing. You're using notes and using real estate to help you get out of that aspect of things. Maybe you're interested in providing education, helping others along the way. That was one of the biggest things that when I started teaching, I wanted to help those and give back as my way of giving back for the, all the opportunities that I had early on, which was unique. Okay. Maybe it's just using this to raise capital for bigger projects, make money to be, you know, donate money. Do you have causes that you want to run? Whatever your thing is or causes, focus on it, okay? The world needs more leaders than followers these days, everybody. In in the true absence of leadership, people will live, listen to the loudest voice, which is sad, okay? In the absence of true leadership, people will listen to the loudest voice. 
And unfortunately, there are some loud voices out there that should not be sharing what's going on, okay? So the thing is, what are you thinking? Is your thing to sit on the edge corner with a shake weight and a luchador mat and sit there and do that all evening? Trying to, that's your thing, sharing the love of shake weight and, and Mexican wrestling? Or is it doing something else? So the, the biggest thing that you have to do, you have to identify your one cause, okay? And unfortunately, you can't be a jack of all trades. You, you now, Don't get me wrong, you can have different causes you're responsible about, but if, if when you're starting out, if you're not effectively doing and leading one way, you can't bounce around. And I, I see that happening. I see that people don't have the patience to lead because it does take a lot of patience. People like to bounce from one thing to another. Oh, I'm going to take a class. I don't like them. I'm going to find something else. I'm going to find something else that's easy. Being a leader is not the easiest thing to do. It is not the easiest thing to do. You have ups, you have downs. You have to be focused on things. You're going to have setbacks, okay? But the one thing is each day that you lead, you are a lot closer to your goal than if you're following somebody who is an ineffective leader, okay? Let's talk about some of the best ways to lead. Yep, today the social world meetups are a great place. Uh, you've a lot of us are joining REI clubs. We're going to networking events. Okay. Uh, great thing about REI clubs networking. They're usually local. Unfortunately, only five to 10% are doing something. And then you have the free groups versus the paid groups. And honestly, I think the free groups are worthless. Okay. Now, if you're not closing deals right now, you don't need to start an REI club. Okay. Do not start an REI club. I see people, I hear from people, oh, such and such as to start a real estate club. I'm like, that's stupid. They haven't closed any deals. How are they going to lead when they've never walked in the steps of leaders to close something? Okay. I turn down going to clubs that are free because you don't have, there's no type of investment there by the tribe. There's no type of really buy-in to the cause. Come and go. They come and go. A pay one, there's some sort of investment. That's a much, I'd rather talk to 10 people that have paid to be a part of something versus a hundred people that haven't paid at all because there's no investment. There's no real thing driving those people together. Now, obviously, meetup groups, those are basically free. Hey, you can join a bunch of them and tap into them, but meetup groups often are just there to be a, a tagline for people to join. There's not a lot of discussions going on. There's not a lot of stuff going with the, the board. It's more emails are going out. There's not a lot of communication going back and forth. And unfortunately, a lot of the leaders of meetup groups are Nazis. Well, not true Nazis, but you get what I'm saying. They don't really allow a lot of interaction. They don't allow you to post on the discussion board. It's very easy to tell that the person running that meetup group is, is sole focused, central focused. Okay. Now you have Facebook groups. Uh, Facebook groups are blown up like crazy. All right. You have open groups versus closed groups. I'm a much, I'm a much more, I like closed groups a lot better than I like open groups. And we're on a part of you open groups and podcast groups and things like that. Um, some real estate groups that are open, but I don't see a lot of interaction taking place in the open groups, what I see so more so is the closed groups where there's much more interaction. Like I'm very, very happy of what we have going on in the WCN crew. It's a great group, 700 plus members, uh, not the nearly the biggest note group, but it's probably the most active group out there. And I see other note groups, they're bigger or growing bigger, but there's no type of buy-in. It's just, oh, let's just invite everybody. And that's not a good tribe. The Cherokee didn't just go with the Sioux. The Sioux didn't go with the Banshees. You get what I'm saying? All right. Uh, Facebook is great because you can also do a local group or you can do a nationwide group. You can do a membership group or you can do an open group. But the biggest thing is you want to try to find something that ties you in. And if you have too much in an open group and we're just inviting every nilly willy person there who's not close the deal, then you get your message gets watered down. Your cause then gets sidetracked instead of going forward to close deals or make things happen, going back and having to restart things all over again. You never grow. Okay. I'm a big fan of masterminds. It's a great way to be a part and to lead people. And what I love about our mastermind, yeah, am I the leader of that? Yes. But I love it because I love seeing other leaders pop up across the country. I love seeing people pop up and then contribute to the mastermind group. Because that's what it is all about. I see the experienced people growing, closing more deals, sharing with the newer people. And that's what you want to see. You want to see people that are closing deals in today's market. Not someone who's closed 10 deals or 20 deals, that's it. I mean, don't get me wrong. A person that's closed 10 deals is better than none. And they can help those that have closed less than 10 at that point but they can't really teach somebody how to get to 30 to 50 to 100 deals. If they've never been down that road. And I'm seeing a lot of that. Everybody's, oh, I'm, a, I'm an expert now. I'm an educator. I haven't closed anything in years, but I'm gonna teach people. 
And I'm like, you can't do that. That gives the whole whole industry as a whole a bad name. All right. And I'll tell you this right now. Experience is not necessary to lead. I will tell you that right now. You can jump in and a lot of people have jumped in. Hey, I'm going to learn along the way. I'm going to jump out of the plane and build my parachute on the way down. That happens. Okay. As I said before, but you can only lead up to your experience level. I see people that are starting to speak and that's great, but I'm a, I'm a big reminder. Hey, make sure you keep closing deals. Don't be asking to speak at a big event when you've closed on two deals because you can't, that makes you a hypocrite. Okay. You've got to walk the walk before you ever talk the talk. That's the, one of the most important things I can tell you. Talk only comes after walk, not the other way around. And I will tell you this too, leaders are not liked by everyone. <laughs> they are not liked by everyone. If you want to be liked by everyone, then you need to follow. I think I've told people before that there's the, the 33 rule. 33% of people are going to love you. 33% of people are going to hate you no matter what you do. And what you have to focus on are the people that love you and the middle 33% that are on the fence. It's okay to be disliked. Because if I'm disliked, I'm probably doing something right. A lot of jealousy is happening out there with things. I see that. And like I said, that's okay. Okay. I will also tell you this. It's okay. You're not going to be perfect. Nobody here is perfect. Okay. You're going to make mistakes. And if you don't know the decision to make, ask your tribe. Ask your tribe for direction on what they are looking for. Pull them. Ask them. Don't be afraid to take feedback from your tribe, whether it's your family, your church, your, P your PTA, the people you work with. Ask the tribe for direction. Okay. Hey, what are you guys thinking? Take feedback. It's once What's the what's a really bad a bad leader is somebody who does not take any type of direction or never asks their audience or their tribe for direction. Hey, where where, do, where would you guys like to go? Tell me where you guys want to go, and I'll lead you to get you there. Okay. Um, when you make mistakes, just own up to them and move on. Don't sit here and dwell on them. Hey, I made a mistake. Boom, 30 seconds later, you're moving on. The worst thing you can do is sit here and just focus on your bad mistakes. You've heard that from quarterbacks or the eight people that play sports. Hey, you made a bad play, forget about it and move on. Don't make three mistakes in a row. Be a leader. Okay, you made one. Don't try to overcome the mistake you just made. Be in the moment. Be where you're at. Okay, learn from your mistakes and learn how to overcome those mistakes when they show up into you as well. Okay, I will tell you this. If you're solely focused on you, your tribe will leave. It doesn't matter what you do. If you're solely focused on me, 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 give me deals, or you can't close because you're not a part of my group, you got to focus on this, or it's all about me making profit, you will lose your tribe. I see this happening every day. Not with us, but what I'm getting at is others. You see Facebook groups where it's all focused on me, focus on me, focus on me. And now those tribes, or sorry, those groups are basically non-existent with experience. There's nothing being posted there anymore. But only a few people are posted there because the leader is no longer really a leader. Okay. So one of the most important things too is to do your thing, everybody. Okay. The world is big enough that you don't have to copy what somebody else is doing. You can do your own thing. Okay. I, I see this happen all the time. I kind of crack a butt. I see a lot of people starting to do oh, interviews or they're doing the podcast. Or, and it's great. Do a podcast, but don't do it like I, we're doing it. Okay. Do it something different. There's so many different niches and different things that you can do. Do it. Okay. So that's supposed to be start off small. You, look, start off small, hone your craft, and your niche will grow from there. If you try to be something to everybody off the bat, you'll be a lot of nothing to everybody. So start off small, focus on that small tribe, build your tribe first. Well, it's kind of a grassroots effort of what you're doing. But the thing is, you guys already, all of you already have tribes. I, you know, I give Steph a little bit of a hard time because she does her uh, pet rescue. She had another successful cat rescue this week. I'm so very proud of her. And I keep pushing her, trying to have more of a leadership role and sharing the message because one cat's great. But if you want to save thousands of animals, you got to get out and share your message. Share what you're doing. Uh, share the webinars. That's one of the things that we started doing webinars years ago. I, I had, remember having a conversation with Val. We were doing some webinars on a regular basis. And Val says, you know what the, the, do you know what the best way that you market? You know, the best thing that you do, Scott, because it's your webinars that you do every Monday night. I would just do it. You do such a great job. 
that's the way you build your tribe. And that's one of the biggest things I can tell you is don't be a hypocrite. Talk about what you know. Be willing to admit what you don't know. And move on. But don't be a hypocrite. Don't say one thing and do something else. Okay? Stick to your word. If you promise something, stick to your word. Yes, it may take longer to get some things done or deals closed or things like that. Just share what's going on. Hey, I've had a bit of a setback. You know, hey, I've been a setback, but I'm working on this. Here's the plan, okay? And don't, ultimately, don't forget what got you there. If you get if you got to where you're at because you're closing first and, or seconds or contract for deeds or owner financing or rentals, hey, great. But don't be one of these guys that goes out and tries to do everything and then be an expert in teaching every aspect of things. That's not smart. You're not focused on, and leaders are focused, Okay. I'll tell you right now, you are good enough, you're smart enough, and don't gone it. People like you. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and dog on it, people like me. And sometimes there are going to be days you might have to say it to yourself to get you pumped up the lead. But being an effective leader is all about getting out of bed and doing the thing again, showing up. Okay. And you got to lead by example more so than anything. There's some amazing people leading by examples out there. I just want to share. I like to brag on people doing some amazing things. You got Cody Cox doing a great job with his Sunday night email and his Friday strolls. And he's closing some big things because he's leading by example. He's, I will tell you this, Cody does a great job. He's got to do some things to ultimately get to where he ultimately wants to go. Adam Adams doing a great job. Adam started off doing the videos, sharing about his pipe drive stuff and then closing deals and he leads by example. He closes it. Great. He works. And what I love about Adam is he also says, look, I'm lazy. I don't want to work that much. And he's sharing how he's doing that. It's a great way to lead by example. Gail Greenberg does a great job too. Talking to people. She uses bigger pockets religiously in Facebook to share with people, talk with people, kind of talk with them. She's leading by example and closing deals, getting to her point. Gail set a goal for herself to hit 10,000 a month residual. So she could be more of a philanthropist. And she's doing that at this point. She's just about that point, if not surpassed it, but doing a great job helping others. And we had a really great honor this week. And Chris's venue was one of our fast track students. And, and Chris showed up. Chris had already closed 45 deals prior to coming to our fast track. And I was like, okay, why are you here? I mean, he really worked hard. He won it at the note camp. And he just you know, he done a great job. He's a, I've heard from plenty of people, Eric Hyde and Bill Greesmer and some other people up there that are doing some great things as well. Talking, hey, Chris does a great job. And I, I was talking to Chris this weekend. He's like, man, I just listen. I listen to something and I implement it. I listen to something that you say or others say, and I go out and I try to implement it. And he does that. And that's what leading by example is all about. If you learn something, go out and implement it. So you learn how to share your story, share your example, share your voice of experience. Okay. And I'm glad you're listening, Chris. It's the truth. Somebody's closing 45 deals. I was like, what are you, why are you here? You're doing a thing great job already. He's like, I want to do some bigger things. I want to leave my job. Great. Awesome. Let's get you there. Had a great time on this weekend. Patty Pett doing a great job. Closed on nine deals already before coming this weekend to the fast track. And you got super watch out for Patty. Patty's going to do some big things. Her and her husband, Chris, are going to do some great things as well. Okay. You've also, yes, you've also got to be very humble. Sometimes you got to eat some humble pie. All right. You've got to just, hey, be yourself. Look, you you got to realize, hey, you put your pants on in the morning and your stuff does stink, okay? We all go to the bathroom. We've all got to wipe our ass. We all got to put deodorant on the day, all right? I don't care who you are. Realize you're nothing special. You're not royalty, all right? You do the same things. As long as you keep doing, people will expect you. But la And last but not least, you got to show up on time. You have to be consistent. You have to have a servant mindset. You have to be honest. You have to give before you'll ever get. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things at the bottom. You have to give before you'll ever get. You've got to have that servant mindset to help those around you. Okay? But you've got to be doing the things that you're teaching them. Otherwise, you are just a talking head. And, you know, one of the great things you've got, I would always say to do, is go out, be consistent. If you're needing help getting a property or contract, what does that mean? Make more offers, okay? Um, we had somebody was talking to me in the last few days, talking about, oh, I was making some offers. They were always coming to loan. I said, well, let's take a look at your numbers. I'm like, oh, you're over-calculating. That's the reason you're not getting the offers because you're scared to death 
of getting accepted. If something bad happened, you're planning for the worst possible outcome and bidding off of that. And it doesn't work that way. Okay. And ultimately in your tribe, whatever your tribe is, you have to build a cultural success. Remember, we talked earlier on about culture. With a, that's a definition of tribe. It's the same culture. A toxic culture is not going to breed nothing but toxicity, chaos. Nothing will get done there. You have to build a culture of success. Tom Herman, who's the head coach at the University of Texas Longhorns, was recently quoted about he became a coach and he thought success would happen faster in his first year at University of Texas. And he's all gung-ho now for year two because his players have now bought into the system. They now bought into his culture. They see the success that he brought from him from the University of Houston when he was the hottest coaching recruit around for years. You have to build a culture of success. That's why Coach Saban from the University of Alabama is doing so well. It's why some of the best coaches out there are doing well. It's because it's a culture of success. And I honestly believe you're a basketball fan. That's part of the reason that the Boston Celtics are doing well, even though if you watch the NBA, they got two of their best players haven't played all year, but have been injured or out. They have a culture of success. They got decent players still, but they believe they go into it. They're doing the things. They're making an extra pass. Same thing with the Golden State Warriors. Steve Kerr has built a culture of success. Built, uh, Greg Popovich has built a culture of success with the San Antonio Spurs. The reason for that is they lead. And, yes, they may not be liked by everyone. Yes, they will be harsh. Yes, they will be direct. But they want to be honest. You'd rather know the truth than have smoke blown up your ass. Right, everybody? Okay? And so – I love this line, warning, lead, follower, get the hell out of the way. I think General Patton was famous for saying this, but it's actually, I think, actually originally probably quoted from Thomas Paine back in the day. Lead, follower, get out of the way. All right? You're going to do one of those three things. You're going to lead, you're going to follow the leaders, or you're just going to get the hell out of the way. And I will tell you this, the leaders are leading sometimes places that you don't want to go. That's fine. I'm not going to follow that. I'm going somewhere else. That's totally fine. Okay. Totally fine. Uh, you got to basically build a, a culture of success, but a culture of teamwork. And Casey Stengel said this, it's easy to get the players. It's getting them to play together. That's the tough part. A lot of times you got to get people that, yes, I know in the notice we're all working towards our own goals and our own deals, but I still think it's one of the best niches out there in the real estate community where people are working together, they're playing together. Co-opetition, as our buddy Joel Markovitz likes to say. It's an opportunity to work together that's the most important thing out there towards its common goals. If you can find people to mentor with you or to mastermind with you, people that are above you, close 100 deals that are willing to help you take that next step, because ultimately you're probably going to help them get along. I'm not talking about the whips and chains. I'm talking about being a slave. I'm talking about working together, rowing in the same direction that you're all wanting to go, because if you were in a rowboat with one oar, you're going to go okay. But if you got two people with you, three people, four people with you that are rowing in the same direction, they'll blow right past the lone wolf. Okay. So, any questions about what I'm covering here tonight, guys? Uh, I'm not getting paid to this. Look, go out and read the book Tribes. It will help you with things. The ultimate thing I want you, I want you to do something. If you're struggling to where you're at, you're struggling getting things done, you're struggling to raise capital, get with somebody, talk with somebody. If you're closing deals, but you've hit that you've hit that wall where you're having a hard time, hey, go help somebody else close some deals. Go help somebody else make it happen. And ultimately, hey, what's going to happen? They're probably going to bring deals to you, okay? Bob Bollinger says, Tom Herman came from a culture success under Urban Meyer at Ohio State. Yep, he was a coach there. But actually, uh, Bob, he actually got his start at Texas Lutheran University in uh, New Braunfels, Texas, for eight grand a year in a meal plan. And uh, I had a chance to meet Tom Herman years ago when one of my buddies, uh, it was a few years younger, he was playing football for them. So, yeah, he did go to Urban Meyer and learn some great stuff. I agree totally. But that's the beautiful thing. He's taken those things and he's transferred to his own success. It's not Urban Meyer at the University of Texas. He learned the culture and he's built his own culture at the university he's gone to. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns. Thank you for sharing, Bob. Appreciate it. Look, 
you all have a cause. We all all have a cause out there that are working towards. Um, I challenge all of you that are here watching this live or watching this on the replay or watching this as Facebook, go change the world. Go take your cause to a next level. Take your tribe to a next level. If you're part of the WCN crew, hey, we're glad you're part of our tribe. Keep sharing. We're looking for leaders. We're looking for people that are closing deals that we can focus on. I'm tired of being a lot of the, the person that's closing the most deals every year. I want somebody to challenge me. I want somebody to push me. I want somebody who wants to do big things that is willing to go to those places. I know there's a lot of people that want to do things, and it's easy to get bogged down. It's easy to get uh, frustrated when you're working full-time in a job and doing something part-time. Look, I believe in all of you. I believe everybody on here can do amazing things. Why do I believe that? Well, if this this X linebacker from a small 3,500 person town in Ingleside, Texas, can do what I've done, you guys can do. You guys have a lot more availability, a lot more options than I had. And you can go out. And for those that don't have options, you can go out and create your own options still through the social media, through the things that are happening out there. You can build your tribe to make things happen. One deal, one person at a time. All right. Uh, Gail says, I'm totally, Kale Villanova says, I'm totally stepping out of my comfort zone, but I feel okay about it. Gail, you've got, uh, it's such a great thing to say. A lot of people that have worked for companies for years, 10, 20, 30 years, left companies, and you've been a follower, you've had a boss, or somebody reported to, it's not the easiest to be an entrepreneur. That freedom can actually strangle you. And when I first became an entrepreneur, it nearly strangled me. I nearly went bankrupt. I had to learn how to act like a leader. I had to grow into the leadership position that I wanted. Okay. Cody, uh, Cody Cox says, I spent the greater part of my career putting people into homes. I'm spending the later part of my career keeping people in their homes. Putting and keeping. PMK investments. Putting people in houses, keep them in there. I like that. You can use that, Cody. <laughs> Good job, Cody Cox. So, guys and gals, I don't have much else. Uh, tonight's topic, like I said, is all about effective leadership is just taking action. It's, it's, it's four things, showing up, being on time, being consistent and, and walking the walk versus just talking it. Do not talk the talk. Do not be one of those people out there is talking, talking, who has no expertise. Oh, everybody can read a book. Everybody can be an online educated idiot, but until you've been in the trenches, until you've closed the deals, until you've talked to the borrowers or dealt with the server servers or invested money, you are not you are not capable of truly teaching somebody else. An entrepreneur or a non-doer can never teach an entrepreneur how to be successful. An hourly employee can never teach a person to be successful. And I leave you with this. If you're not talking to banks and asset managers and you're doing using your own funds or using other people's funds, do not ever let a banker or asset manager talk down to you. Because if they've got a salary, you've got more waivos than they do because you're out there putting your own hard-earned money on the line or somebody else's and partnering your profits on the line. And yes, guys, gals, you've got balls. Ladies, yours are just higher up. Don't ever let anybody talk back to you. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do what you're doing because it will all start somewhere. And the fact that you're out there actually making offers, making phone calls, dropping emails out, posting videos, whatever you're doing is more powerful than that one person or those few small-minded individuals on the sit on the sideline saying, oh, dear marketing, and why are you doing that? Wah, wah, wah. And I see that, and it drives me bonkers because those people that are namesayers are the, what's wrong with this world. If they would shut the hell up and go do a little bit what those others are doing, what those that don't have the resources are doing to build something, to build something bigger than they have, kudos to you for taking action. And screw you for being negative, Nancy. Okay? They, yeah, they are nonpreneurs. Exactly. So, guys, gals, go out, make something happen. You've all got a cause. We need you to lead us. There are way too many people out there that need help or looking for help. We all can help. I'm only one man, one myth, definitely not a legend. And uh, go make something happen. Go lead us. Go take action. Use the tools that are available to you this day to share your message and share what you're focused on and your cause. And I guarantee you may just find some other crazy note investors or other people in the niches to help you out with that. Thanks again, guys. Go out, be blessed, 
And uh, I'll see you next Monday night on Night in America, everybody. Bye.